So one thing that I've always been curious about is Windows phones. Now, a lot of people might be wondering, well, why exactly is that? Well, I know that in many parts of the world, they just did not do well. They were incredibly uncommon, but apparently in Europe, now I don't have any source for this, but from what I've been told, about 30% of the budget phone market was dominated by Windows phone. And in fact, I very nearly got one myself because I did know people who had them and they always seemed to kind of be a very sleek experience that was much better than what Android was offering. Now, I've never been the type of person who wants the largest app library. I just want something that's polished and works and Windows Phone did seem to be that but unfortunately I never ended up getting a Windows Phone and as you can probably tell by the fact that I run a Linux channel I really don't have anything to do with Windows anymore so I suppose you can imagine my surprise when I got one of these this is a Lumia 640 XL and it's a Windows Phone and in today's video we're going to go ahead and do a first impressions of it right now on the Linux lounge If you enjoyed this video, consider joining Odyssey, the freedom respecting alternative to YouTube. Links in the description. Indeed, this here is a Lumia 640 XL, which is, as I said, a Windows phone. Now, this is a Linux channel and I don't use Windows, but I did want to go ahead and give this a look since I had an opportunity that I just could not pass up on. And indeed, this is a Lumia 640 XL and having messed around with it a little bit, to be honest, I've only really turned it on to update some of the apps and stuff, but I have had a little bit of a mess around with it. And I've got to say, it kind of does make me wish that back in the day, I'd gone with a Windows phone. Now, is it better than, say, Ubuntu Torch or Selfish OS or any other mobile Linux distribution? Of course not, but is it better than Android and iOS? Well, having not used this back in the day, I don't know, but my first impressions would seem to be that, yeah, this probably would have been better than Android or iOS for me. But with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at this phone, because I've got to say, it's pretty clear that Microsoft were probably onto something here. Now, this is a 640XL, and this was neither the super budget end of Windows phones, which is is what I saw a lot of way back when. And it's not the super high end of Windows phones either because unfortunately the super high end of Windows phones are actually still relatively expensive for what they are. If you want a 950 or 950 XL, I think those go for about 100 pounds still, which to me seems a little bit ridiculous for a Windows phone, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. Now this phone feels relatively sturdy and it's actually pretty big. It's got a plastic back as you would imagine. Interestingly enough, it actually has a Zeiss camera, which that's pretty cool. And one particularly cool feature of this phone is that it actually has, if you can believe it, a removable back and a removable battery. So if I just pull this off, and you can see there's a removable pretty large battery and it's actually Microsoft branded interestingly enough. There's also a slot for a SIM card and micro SD card so that's pretty cool. You can expand the storage on this which you'll probably need to because it only comes with 8 gigabytes as standard but I suppose back then that wasn't that weird for a budget phone. So with that said there's nothing left to do really other than turn it on. So I've got to say the display on this is actually very nice. It won't come through on the camera most likely but it is a pretty nice screen. Now it's it's not an AMOLED display, but a lot of Windows phones did actually have AMOLED displays, which is quite impressive. So we just go ahead and open it up, and as you can see, we reach a kind of start menu type thing. Now you can pin whatever you want on here, and you get pretty lively little widgets that enable you to launch the app. Now, from what I've been told from people who were big fans of Windows phones, these are actually very lively and quite nice to have. To be honest, I quite like the looks of them as well. Now you can see that I've done a bit of customization here, and I've got to say Windows phone is a little bit hideous out of the box but with a bit of customization it looks vastly vastly cleaner than Android and that is something that I do like I do like a consistent clean visual look to things now everything that you would expect from a phone is here you can go to this sort of start page which is a bit like your Android home screen you can swipe and see a list of installed apps a bit like Android you can pull down a top menu here and you've got some quick widgets as well as your notification stuff so that's also a little bit like Android Android. It is all a bit Android-esque, but it is, you know, it kind of is what it is. It is pretty nice. It works. Some things are a little bit strange though. So for instance, if we launch an app and I just want to point out this isn't a high-end phone, but you can see the performance is actually pretty good. So what's quite weird is to open the multitasking view, you actually have to press and hold on the back button and the Windows button brings you back to the start page as it does on desktop. There's also a dedicated Cortana button, but I've not tried that out because I'm not sending my voice data and such to Microsoft. Also, for some reason, it says search your PC. This is 
not a PC. But I've got to say it is very, very much like desktop Windows. So before we just go ahead and stop this video, because to be honest, there's not terribly much to say for my first impressions. I do just want to go through some of the apps that are installed. Now, a lot of these apps actually don't work anymore, which is expected, because unfortunately Windows Phone hasn't been updated in I think a year or two. And I think the official Microsoft Office support ended earlier this year, which is actually a lot longer than a lot of people would expect. So if we just go through these, you can see that the same problem that plagues Windows desktops also plagued Windows Phone because there is a lot of bloat here. I don't exactly know why there's two apps to do the same thing. There's all these junk apps that you'll probably never use. For some reason, there's a shortcut to the Facebook website on here. I don't know what that's about. I suppose maybe it's because they never had an official Facebook app, but they wanted to show people, hey, look, you can still browse Facebook. I don't know. Although, thankfully, you can actually uninstall these as far as I can tell. At least you can uninstall some of them. There's also some weird emissions I would have thought would be bundled that aren't, but that is what it is. Now, unfortunately, considering Windows Phone was never that popular, and considering it's not been supported for quite some time now, if you go onto the Windows Microsoft App Store, there's not actually that many apps that are available. Although, with that said, I was actually surprised by how many apps that you can still get. For instance, there's a version of Spotify, there's a version of Netflix. Supposedly, they both still work. There's a version of Duolingo for some reason. Now, I'm naming these off because they're few and far between. But there's also a surprising amount of games that are still on there. You can still get Candy Crush and stuff. Now, I don't really play junk mobile games, but to be honest, I will download those and have a little bit of an experiment because I am curious about what the Windows Phone experience is like. But I've got to say, I am impressed and I do wish that I'd gotten a Windows Phone back in the day. Although I would much rather use Ubuntu Touch, now I think that this would have been a good option. And to be honest, as bad as I think Microsoft is, I think that Windows Phone definitely should have stayed around as a kind of third option, because as bad as proprietary software is, three proprietary options are better than two proprietary options, and given how good a lot of this stuff is, I think that Windows Phone would have definitely forced Apple and Google to compete more, but for now, I think unfortunately Windows Phone is going to kind of have to stay as a bit of a interesting footnote in Microsoft's history, and certainly I don't recommend that anyone go out and get a Windows Phone now, because like I say, they are very out of support. If you want a basic smartphone, I think you could probably do worse, but you could also certainly do a lot better. But with that said, I do still want to have a mess around with this Windows phone and definitely expect more videos like this in the future because there are a lot of projects out there for the Windows phone that I want to try. For instance, it's actually possible to run Android apps on one of these things. Not well, but you can do it apparently. It's also possible to install the full desktop ARM version of Windows onto one of these, which is something that I want to try out too. And yeah, there's just numerous other things things that I want to try too. And I also want to kind of see just how usable a Windows phone is in 2021. So I definitely want to make a follow-up video with something like that. And just generally, I want to kind of get into the Windows phone things and that sort of stuff. But for now, all I can say is I'm relatively impressed for what it is, but that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my Windows phone first impressions and I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.